I see it all over the place, YouTube comments and forums alike. Wait for Zen, seems to be the in thing right now. If you're not interested in spending more than about 200 or so US dollars on an Intel CPU, and you're not interested in the efficiency nor the single core performance of an FX processor, namely the AM3 and FM2 Plus lineups, then wait for Zen. But I've never really been a fan of that phrase. As much as I do want AMD to come in and just crush the market and force Intel to lower their prices substantially in order to compete, we have to be real here. It's taken AMD almost five or six years to come up with a process that is much more efficient than the one they're currently using. On top of that, they've pushed their deadline back time and time again. Not that any other company doesn't do that, but you get my point. But it does finally seem like Zen is, in fact, just around the corner according to multiple sources, and that means, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Zen is, in fact, worth waiting for. So what the heck is this video about then, Greg? I mean, Zen isn't released yet, and I doubt you have benchmarks of Zen CPUs, and even if you did, you'd be under a non-disclosure agreement, so you couldn't release those anyway. What do you plan to do here? I'm gonna get you hyped up for it. What I have here is an FX8320E, a four module, eight core CPU. I have a video explaining FX architecture in a card right here. But let's be fair, it's not the most efficient chip and it's certainly not the most powerful, which probably explains its price. AMD realizes this, that's why they've been taking so long to refine Zen to make sure that it is competitive with Intel's current lineup. The jump from 32 to 14 nanometers not only means big changes in efficiency, but also IPC, instructions per clock, which is essentially how powerful a single core in any given CPU is. The bulldozer and pile driver lineups were never especially spectacular when it came to single core performance, which is a big reason why they took huge frame rate hits in most cases in games. I mean, take a look at these graphs here. In literally every game, the FX8320E falls significantly behind the i7-6700K when it comes to average and minimum frame rates. We can't of course blame AMD in the sense that, well, this is 32 nanometer architecture compared to 14 nanometer architecture. It's, I mean, it's pile driver versus Skylake. What do you expect, folks? Well, uh, I do expect AMD to release something soon that should compete with the i7-6700K. And if we're looking at prices around 200 or 250 US dollars, that'll put a huge target on the i7 7700K's back. Look, I'm not showing you those graphs to make Intel look any better. That's the last thing I want to do. Intel needs competition that is undeniable. What I'm trying to do is keep you away from a CPU lineup that will undoubtedly become obsolete in the coming days. I can finally say it with certainty, folks. Waiting for Zen is worth doing. Even if you're planning to build an ultra-budget PC with either an FX 6-core or 8-core processor, I would argue that waiting for Zen and buying their cheapest 4-core processor would be the better bet. And it doesn't matter what game you play, at this point almost all games benefit from stronger single cores. I mean, look at Minecraft. Even a heavily modded version in 1440p, which utilizes more GPU than I would like to think, suffers dramatically under an FX 8320E, literally half the frame rate across the board. Just another reason to wait. This isn't a matter of red versus blue, who's on which side, who claims to be a fanboy, and who claims to call other people fanboys. This is simply a matter of price to performance, something that I expect Zen will shake up the market with. I choose Intel for 90-95% to 95 of my personal rigs because Intel CPUs are undoubtedly much more powerful and don't result in significant frame rate cuts like we just saw. Budget builders have a different question to ask, but you should ultimately be led to the same conclusion. Wouldn't you rather wait for a much better PC in the CPU department than build one right now that would honestly disappoint you if you compared it to a CPU like this? It just comes down to patience. DDR4, PCIe 3.0, newer chips, newer architecture, all that stuff can be enticing, but are you willing to wait for it? Granted, not a lot of these things will have significant impact on your day-to-day -day, uh, computing tasks, but when it comes to the CPU itself, AMD Zen, 14 nanometer architecture, a totally different design of a CPU core for AMD, is all of that worth waiting for? I say yes, I hope you do too. Let me know in the comments what you think. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you are hyped up at all. Give it a dislike if you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life. And click that subscribe button if you haven't already. This is Stellazar Studio. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for learning with us.